Good morning, America. Breaking news. Donald Trump names retired General Michael Flynn as national security advisor, according to a senior Trump transition official. He's also set to meet former rival Mitt Romney to discuss Secretary of State. The transition kicking into high gear as the president-elect holds his first face-to-face -face with a head of state. Blizzard warning. The first major snowstorm of the season, shutting down highways, sparking deadly pileups and delaying flights, creating a travel nightmare less than a week before Thanksgiving. Now more cold and snow in the forecast. Terrifying road rage. The chilling 911 call. The woman behind the wheel, and she says she was attacked by a stranger. Are you going for her? Did he hit your car? Yeah. Her incredible escape from what she calls her 25 minutes of torment. And amazing rescue. The family of four stranded for days when their van gets stuck, surviving on Halloween candy. But no cell phone to call for help. How they were finally found. Live in Times Square, this is GMA with Robin Roberts, George Stephanopoulos, and Michael Strahan. Good morning, America. Happy Friday. <laughs> We're less than a week out from Thanksgiving, and so all eyes on the weather and that first snowfall of the season for millions. Yep, the snowfall in the middle of the country. It's seeing, middle country seeing major weather whiplash. A 60 degree swing there. There's some guys out golfing. That weather to this weather, which makes you just want to curl up under the sheets. And Ginger, she's going to have more on that coming up. Yeah, it could affect a lot of Thanksgiving travel. Okay. Meantime, a lot of work for Donald Trump, the president elect hold up in Trump Tower. And we have some breaking news from the Trump trend. Transition. Officials have confirmed that former General Michael Flynn has accepted an offer to serve as President Trump's national security advisor. That is a key position for a general with a long career in military intelligence, a general who has also courted controversy inside the government and on the campaign trail. We're going to talk about that, and we've also learned that Trump is set to meet with Mitt Romney this weekend. ABC's Martha Raddatz has the latest developments. Joins us from Washington. Good morning, Martha. Good morning, Robin. These, of course, are key posts in any administration. But as for Mike Flynn, he has been with Trump from the beginning. Two senior Trump transition officials confirm that Lieutenant General Michael Flynn has accepted the offer to be national security advisor. A controversial figure, Flynn roused support at the Republican National Convention with the infamous lock her up chant against Hillary Clinton. Lock her up. That's right. Yes, that's right. Lock her up. And in his book, Field of Fight, Flynn writes, I don't believe all cultures are morally equivalent. Trump also extending an olive branch to former Governor Mitt Romney. Transition sources telling ABC News the two will meet this weekend and that Romney is under consideration for Secretary of State. The meeting coming after months of mudslinging from both sides. He's playing the members of the American public for suckers. He gets a free ride to the White House and all we get is a lousy hat. Mitt Romney's made a total fool of himself. Did you ever see a guy like this? He didn't like it when I said he choked like a dog. He choked like a dog. Thursday afternoon, the president-elect also sending out a memo about his meeting with Alabama Senator Jeff Sessions, saying while nothing has been finalized, he has been unbelievably impressed with him and his phenomenal record. Well, I'd be honored to be considered, and uh, uh, well, uh, Mr. Trump, uh, I will make those decisions. But critics immediately pointing to Sessions' past allegations of racist behavior. One lawyer he worked with said the senator called him boy and told him to be careful what you say to white folks. Sessions denied the allegation. Away from cameras overnight, the president-elect also having his first face-to-face -face meeting with a world leader, meeting with Japanese Prime Minister Abe, who told reporters after the meeting that Trump is a leader who I can have have great confidence in. And this morning, Donald Trump implying he's delivering on his campaign promises to keep jobs in America, tweeting, just got a call from my friend Bill Ford, chairman of Ford, who advised me that he will be keeping the Lincoln plant in Kentucky, no Mexico. But Ford tells ABC News it never planned to relocate the entire plant. Robin? So that is not clear, but what is clear is General Flynn being the national security advisor. You have known him for many years. What do you make of this election, Martha? I, I have, Robin. He's considered highly skilled when it comes to intelligence gathering, but in this role, he will be helping to shape U.S. foreign policy, the military in all aspects. He will have Trump's ear 
all the time, and this does not require congressional approval. Robin? All right, Martha, thank you. Okay, let's get more on this now from our chief political analyst, Matthew Dowd, also John Cohen, national security official in Republican and Democratic administrations, also worked with General Flynn. So, John, let me begin uh, with you as well. As, as Martha pointed out, the general had had great successes in Iraq and Afghanistan, forced to leave the job as defense intelligence agency head early, and has courted controversy. Yeah, good morning, George. Uh, yes, uh, General Flynn is smart, he's intelligent, he's experienced. His military and intelligence experience will serve him well in the role of national security advisor. But he's very intense and he's very forceful, particularly when he's advocating his ideas. And he has uh, been known to be somewhat dismissive uh, of the ideas of others. He will have to be very open, very measured in this new role uh, if he's going to be an effective national security advisor. Uh, to uh, the new president. Yeah, the job of national security advisor generally seemed to be an honest broker among the various national security cabinet departments. I, let me go to you, Matthew Dowd. Mitt Romney, interesting that he's going to be coming in this weekend for a meeting with Donald Trump. Talk about the possibility of Secretary of State, whether that turns out to be true or not, even talking about it, a political boon for President elect Trump. Yeah, and I'm not surprised that Mitt Romney would sit down with Donald Trump. I think if Hillary Clinton had won their election, that Mitt Romney would have sat down with Hillary Clinton if asked. He cares for the country, loves the country, knows the country has to unite. I would actually be very surprised if Mitt Romney gets an appointment or even takes an appointment, but having a meeting is good. The other thing, and related to General Flynn, this is a guy that's unfiltered and very much in the mold of Donald Trump, shoot from the hip. I'm reminded of Donald Trump's appointment so far with Steve Bannon and General Flynn of the Kenny Chesney song, Better as a Memory, which is, all my friends are pirates. That's just who I am. He seems to be assembling a pirate brigade. Another friend of his, uh, Senator Sessions, we, we talked about those allegations of racism that cost him a federal judgeship 20 years ago. He served in the Senate for 20 years since then. So how serious are, will those charges be in, in his confirmation if he is indeed chosen for a job like Attorney General or Pentagon Secretary? Well, the Senate gives great deference, as you know, George, to the appointments of the president. It's his privilege to make the cabinet the way he wants to make it. I think in a split Senate, this could be problematic for Senate, for, for Donald, President-elect Trump in this appointment in this. It is a question the country is very concerned about diversity and how the appeals are made and what happened in the campaign. And again, Senator Sessions could have a real problem getting approval by the Senate. And John, you've served in national security positions during transitions as well. We're seeing something of a break of protocol with President-elect Trump. He met with the Japanese Prime Minister yesterday. He's had dozens of phone calls, but not going through the normal process of the State Department. Yeah, that's true. That was, that was somewhat unusual. Uh, and we've seen many unusual things uh, during the course of this campaign in the early stages of this transition. But this is a very important uh, thing to remember. This administration will be taking uh, charge of the government at a time where we are facing significant threats abroad and significant threats at home. They're going to need to be ready on day one to handle a crisis. The minute that oath of office has been administered, they own any crisis that uh, impacts the United States. Okay, John Cohen, Matthew Dowd, thanks very much. Much more on the whole transition this Sunday on This Week. Michael? All right, thank you, George. Now, let's turn to Philip Minna, who drew the short straw. He's in the middle of the first snow of the season in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Good morning, Philip. Michael, good morning. Yeah, that first major snowstorm of the season has arrived here in Sioux Falls. Giant stockpiles of this rock salt about the size of a three story building at the ready. About 500 tons of this stuff will be used today to help keep those roads safe. Winter is finally here. Up to a foot of snow falling in Wyoming and Colorado. Much of it touching down at rush hour. The slick roads and poor visibility leading to dangerous driving conditions. At least two people died in accidents on I-70 near Denver. The freeway shut down in both directions. This 15-car pileup caused by a mix of snow and sleet. Massive delays at Denver International Airport. We were delayed until 4, and then they canceled it and said that we'll have to wait till the morning. In Wyoming, dozens of accidents as drivers fought to stay on the road on Interstate 80. The snow started falling here about an hour ago, and it is not letting up. Up to 10 inches could fall today as this storm heads east. 
Michael? All right, thank you, Philip. Stay warm and be safe. And Ginger, you got more weather, snow and cold is, is heading next. And it's blasting east, Michael. You can see this picture out of Sturgis, South Dakota. The roads look like this for so many folks, and a lot of people actually hit the road today and air travel for Thanksgiving because they have next week off. So this is a big deal with this storm blowing through. Blizzard warnings now for parts of western Minneapolis. You're driving along 94 to Fargo. That's going to be travel not advised. Just don't do it. Give it 24 hours if you can. Aberdeen and then look at the snowfall. We're not just talking a couple inches. Some places are going to get six to even 12 inches of snow in northern Minnesota. But even in Minneapolis, you get the wind gusting to 30, 40 miles per hour. And that's why just west of them, you actually have that blizzard warning. Just a real quick look at the cold because the chill is no joke. Feels like five in Denver. Remember, we were talking 80, Robin? Yes, I know. They're out there golfing five. and all that. Okay. Giant three. Woo. Oh. Distant what a difference. Memory, a distant. <laughs> Thank you so much. Now to an alarming confrontation with an Arizona police officer caught on camera. The officer seen scuffling with a woman and then punching her. Hey. He now says there is more to the story. Our senior justice correspondent, Pierre Thomas, has more. Good morning, Pierre. Good morning, Robin. Today, an Arizona patrolman has been placed on administrative leave after yet another controversial police encounter, as you said, caught on tape. The video is jarring. An officer punching a woman in the face during an eviction. Hey, you can't hit a girl like that. Look again in slow motion. A direct blow to the face. I was punched in the face two times. I was choked. I... <laughs> It's just a brutal attack. But the Flagstaff police officer, Jeff Bonar, who apparently has no history of excessive force, claims the woman, 30-year-old Marissa Morris, resisted arrest, kicking and kneeing him the groin before he hit her, something she denies. The case now under investigation. We became aware of this incident uh, primarily through social media. We immediately became concerned. Overnight, authorities releasing clips from the officer's body camera, showing the moments following the tense exchange, but not the entire encounter. Police now looking into why the officer did not turn his camera on when the exchange started to get heated. The case symbolic of the overwhelming prevalence of surveillance cameras and smartphones placing police increasingly under more scrutiny. Please let go then. It's become reflex for citizens to pull out their phones and record interactions with police like we saw here in Alabama last November when college students reached for their cameras in unison and later recorded police beating them. Back in the Arizona case, you can hear the bystander recording the video comforting the woman. I got it on camera. It's a complicated case, a classic he said, she said scenario. And now police officials under the public microscope must make a judgment call as to whether the officer broke the law. Robin? Hope they get to the bottom of it. All right, Pierre, thank you. All right, now let's turn to Dr. Besser. And there's a huge mumps outbreak on some college campuses, thousands of camp cases across the country this year. And Dr. Besser, mumps, is she like a childhood I illness. Right. There is a vaccine That's for right. it. So why so many outbreaks? Why on college? Yeah. Cases? So this is this is a big increase. But but the vaccine doesn't protect 100 percent of people. Mm -hmm. If you get two doses, which is what you should get, that's going to protect about 88 percent of people. If you only get one dose of the vaccine, that will protect about 78 percent of people. So that means on college campuses, a lot of people who are still at risk of the mumps. And college campuses are disease incubators. I've got two kids in college. One's had mumps. The other one's always sick. And and, you know, they're, they're living in crowded quarters. They're mm -hmm. sharing secretions. They're sharing water bottles. It's a place where diseases tend to spread. All right, so what are the symptoms of mumps? So the telltale sign is that swelling of the cheeks, loss of the jawline because your salivary glands are inflamed, fever, mm -hmm. body aches, all those kinds of, of typical viral, viral symptoms. Most people recover fine, if, though there are some people who will get some swelling of the brain. Rarely you can get swelling of the testicles. If you get it when you're pregnant, it can affect the baby. So you want to do what you can to prevent this disease, get your two doses of vaccine, and if you're sick, stay away from people for at least five days. So vaccines, stay away from people for That's five right. days. And, and try not to share the stuff. You know, on campuses, there's a lot of the sharing, there's a lot of the kissing, mm -hmm. there's risk. A lot of the kissing. There's Might not stop the kissing. kissing. <laughs> I, <don't> know. <laughs> I know. I talk to my kids. There's no way. It's, it's, that's not gonna gonna stop. it's not going to happen. Well, yeah. you know what? You'll be answering everybody's questions on Twitter. So if you exactly. have any questions, just ask Dr. Oh, Besser. He'll have the answer for you. What are you going to do? Throw your kids under the bus now. <laughs> okay. It, it's on you now. Amy. All right. Thanks for that transition. Uh, yeah. All right. Good morning, guys. Just hours before President Obama arrives in Peru, the Secret Service has released pictures of its biggest counterfeit cash bust ever 
look at that, $30 million in fake bills linked to a criminal organization in Peru, along with printing presses, 48 people arrested. Peru, by the way, is the top producer of fake American currency. Nearly 200 square miles have now burned as those wildfires rage across the south. Parts of Georgia haven't seen rain in two months. Air quality is so bad there, children are being kept inside during school recess, and people with asthma are now being told to close their windows. A dramatic call for help in Maryland as a woman was mauled by a bear. She was walking down her daughter's driveway. When she was attacked, the bear was apparently protecting its cub. The woman survived by playing dead, but you have to hear this 911 call. Please come out, send someone now. He's broken my arms and my legs. I can't move, and I'm bleeding, and I'm gonna die. Please hurry. Oh my God, here he comes. Please, dear God, no. Please, dear God, no. How is so? Ah, she suffered a broken arm. She needed 70 stitches but she is recovering, thankfully. In business news, Volkswagen is cutting 30,000 jobs as it tries to recover from that emissions cheating scandal. The company is paying $15 billion to settle claims in the United States. And finally, if you want to play hooky from work and call in sick, we have the results of an important survey for you. A research firm found the best time to call in sick is 6 38 a.m. on a Tuesday. Hmm. That's when your claim of illness will be found most credible, not on a Monday or a Friday because that's too close to the weekend. The best excuse, you ask? Stomach problems. Nobody <laughs> wants those details. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently November and December are the most common months to call in sick, so just be careful. You just <laughs> ruined that for everybody. I know, <laughs> really. You should have told us that off camera. 6.38 <laughs> is a little late for us. Yeah, maybe like 3.38 for us. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Amy. We're going to move on now to that family of four in Washington State found safe and sound after they went missing for days. It all began when their car got stuck, and ABC's Neil Karlinski has the details on how they survived. 48 terrifying hours huddled together inside the family van on this remote Washington State logging road came to an end with this 911 call. I found uh, some people in the woods, the McAllisters, with, uh, they're from Grace Harbor. They've been gone for a few days and have two babies. Jason and Melissa McAllister, along with their two-year-old and eight-month-old daughters, vanished on Tuesday. This morning, Jason says the family van got stuck in mud while trying to go around a fallen tree on a scenic drive, stranding them. It got dark on us, and so we spent the night on the side of the road after I made a shelter. He says they survived on a diet of leftover Halloween candy and rainwater. They had no cell phone and turned the van's engine on and off in shifts to keep warm, but preserve their gas. Thursday morning, they heard on the radio that people were out searching for them, so Jason says they left a breadcrumb trail of white pieces of paper behind, seen right there, as they hiked off looking for help. They ran into a local hunter who called 911. Yeah, I searched the rescue. I'm looking for you guys for a few days. And you said they're dehydrated? <laughs> um, yeah, a little bit, but they look pretty good, really. This morning, the family of four is waking up at home, healthy and thankful. Everybody's good. God's great. And happy to be alive. For Good Morning America, Neil Karlinski, ABC News, Seattle. A lot of gratitude there. Yep, mm -hmm. Rightfully so. Mm -hmm. And Ginger, you got more on this Thanksgiving travel. That's right. We're about to do our own temperature tumble as we look at this. Look at New York City. 60s today. Snow blowing through just north of the city as we go in. The temperatures are going to go right with it. Let's get to the weekend getaway now brought to you by Macy's. It's Macy's one day sale Saturday with a preview day Friday with amazing deals of the day store wide. Like three quarter length packable down jackets only $69.99. Get a half carat total weight diamond bracelet now $300. Save 60% on kids' outerwear from London Fog and more. Take 30% plus an extra 15% off kitchen electrics. And all 16-piece comforter sets, now only $77.99. Macy's one-day sale Saturday with a preview day Friday. Don't miss it.
a chilly start on this Friday, but wow, what a day today is going to be. Today's going to be one of those days where hopefully you can leave work early. We're going to see uh, temperatures warm very quickly, 30s to the 40s between 8 and 9 a.m., and quickly into the 50s to about 64, 65 by lunchtime today. Forecasting a high today of 70 degrees. It is just going to feel nice and look nice. One pretty day today with clouds on the increase tomorrow, tracking some rain after about 5, 6 o'clock, and a Jekyll High kind of weekend. We get the cold winter type conditions on Sunday. Pumped about the cold and snow. That's a picture from Vail, Colorado. Yeah. Keystone opens today. Wow. Breckenridge tomorrow. Where I learned nice. to ski way back when. There you go. Mm -hmm. We can go back today. Oh, love to <laughs> <laughs> Coming up, we have new clues in that Manhattan murder. Two men now charged in connection with the killing of a 26 year old after a night.